Part 2, Vygotsky, Sociocultural Theory. An important idea, scaffolding and the zone of proximal development. Now we know that children learn by interacting with knowledgeable others. It could be a student, an adult, or a teacher hearing the thoughts of others. Now this concept translates into the zone of proximal development. Touch this for a while, hang on to it. Uh, this will come into focus a little bit more clearly over the next two and a half minutes or so. The zone of proximal development is that place between where a child can do a task independently and the task is so hard it frustrates the child. That place right in the middle between independent and frustrated levels is the level where children can perform a task with the help, scaffolding, of a teacher. They can uh, do the task if help is given to them. The help is called scaffolding. Put more simply, we want to find out where a child is at, their independent level, get just a little bit out in front of them, give them some supports, so that they can learn and do the task with teacher help and support. If it is too hard, we're going to frustrate them. Too easy, we'll bore them. So we look to find that nice zone of proximal development. Yet another visual aid for you, scaffolding. Cannot solve a problem, can solve a problem independently, this nice place in the middle. So children learn by getting just a little out in front of them, providing the scaffolding necessary. And I'll give you some examples of this in video number three. And eventually they internalize the scaffolding and they can solve the problem or do the task independently. Scaffolding, a major teaching concept that you will be using whether you're coaching, teaching, or trying to get anybody to learn any tasks. Too easy, boredom. Too hard, anxiety, frustration. Find that place right in the middle, zone of proximal development. Now, here's one of the issues. If children were standardized products, this would be easy, wouldn't it? If everyone was the same, the same, the same, but they are not. Children have different levels at different skills and different ways of thinking. The importance of multi-level inclusive strategies, which is a topic for another time. Implications? Well, for goodness sakes, use scaffolding. Find that zone of proximal development. Children can grow and can perform these more challenging tasks when they are assisted by advanced others. And these advanced others could be older students, guides, teacher, mentors. One of the big ideas here is the idea of multi-level or multi-age classroom. Children in grades one through three, four through six, you create learning experiences where there's social interaction, collaboration, or cooperative learning, and the talk that naturally occurs between more advanced and less advanced children, that creates a sort of scaffolding or structure whereby they can learn the skill. Whether you use multi-age classrooms or not, social interactions, collaboration, and cooperative learning enhance learning. So learn to incorporate them, again, a, a topic for another day, into your teaching and thinking. Another topic is this idea of cognitive modeling. Cognitive modeling is simply thinking out loud when you're faced with a problem. When you are teaching a skill, as a teacher, you think out loud. Let's see, what should I do here? I know I did this, so I should... All right, thinking out loud. Also, when you are using problem-solving activities in your class, and hopefully you are using problem-based learning at some point, the importance of putting children in pairs or small groups so they can hear the thinking of others. That is how they learn. Remember, thinking happens from the outside in. Hearing the thought processes of others is important. This is the end of part two where we looked at scaffolding, the zone of proximal development, important, uh, important concepts to have when teaching a skill of any kind.